I just want to encourage all of you watching to pray and ask God, just like it says in James 1, 5, to give you wisdom and discernment to determine whether or not this book is true. And if you truly receive that wisdom from the God of the Bible, you will determine that this book is absolutely 100% false. If you are a Latter-day Saint, I have some questions for you. Why does the Mormon Church still teach that Joseph Smith was a true prophet of God after he made a false prophecy about the temple being built in Missouri in his generation? In Doctrine and Covenants 84, verse 1 through 5. Since the time when Brigham Young taught that both the moon and the sun were inhabited by people, has the Mormon Church ever found scientific evidence of that to be true? You can find this in Journal of Discourses, 1870, Volume 13, page 271. Why did Brigham Young teach that Adam is our father and our God when both the Bible and the Book of Mormon in Mormon 9, verse 12, say that Adam is a creation of God? Journal of Discourses, April 9, 1852, Volume 1, page 50. If Brigham Young was a true prophet, how come one of your later prophets overturned his declaration which stated that the black man could never hold the priesthood in the LDS Church until after the resurrection of all other races? In Journal of Discourses, December 12, 1854, to... 142 through 143. Since the Bible's test to determine whether someone is a true prophet of God is 100% accuracy in the prophecy, Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22, has the LDS Church ever reconsidered its teaching that Joseph Smith and Brigham Young were true prophets? Since the current LDS prophets oftentimes contradict the former ones, how do you know which one is correct. Which one do you trust? Since there are several different contradictory accounts of Joseph Smith's first vision, how did the LDS Church choose the correct one? Can you show me in the Bible the LDS teaching that we must all stand before Joseph Smith on Judgment Day? Can you show me archaeological and historical proof from non- Mormon sources that prove that the people and the places found in the Book of Mormon are true? If the words familiar spirit in Isaiah 29 verse 4 refer to the Book of Mormon, why do familiar spirits always refer to occult practices such as channeling and necromancy everywhere else in the Old Testament? Why did Joseph Smith condone polygamy as an ordinance from God in Doctrine and Covenants 132 when the Book of Mormon had already condemned the practice in Jacob 115 and Jacob 224? Why were the words white and delightsome in 2 Nephi 30 verse 6 changed to pure and delightsome right on the heels of the civil rights campaign for blacks. If God is an exalted man with a body of flesh and bones, why does Alma 18, 26 through 28 and John 4, verse 24 say that God is a spirit? Why did God encourage Abraham and Sarah to lie in Abraham 2, 24? Isn't lying a sin according to the Ten Commandments? And why did God tell Abraham and Sarah to lie when 2 Nephi 9.34 condemns liars to hell? Why does the Book of Mormon state that Jesus was born in Jerusalem in Alma 7.10 when history and the Bible state very clearly that he was born outside of Jerusalem in Bethlehem? 
If the Book of Mormon is the most correct of any book on earth, as Joseph Smith said, why does it contain over 4,000 changes from the original 1830 edition? If the Book of Mormon contains the fullness of the everlasting gospel, why does the LDS Church need additional works and additional scriptures? If the Book of Mormon contains the fullness of the everlasting gospel, why doesn't it say anything about so many important teachings, such as eternal progression, celestial marriage, the word of wisdom, the plurality of gods, the pre-existence of man, our mother in heaven, baptism for the dead, and so much more. Why do you baptize for the dead when both Mosiah 325 and the Bible state that there is no chance of salvation after death? Since the word grace means a free gift that cannot be earned, why does the Book of Mormon state, for we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do? In 2 Nephi 25, 23. Does the LDS Church still consider the Pearl of Great Price, Book of Abraham, holy scripture, even after several prominent Egyptologists proved that it was an ancient funeral document? Why does the Book of Abraham, chapters 4 and 5, contradict Alma 11 in stating that there is more than one God? Why does Doctrine and Covenants 4218 say that there is no forgiveness for a murderer. When 3 Nephi 30 verse 2 says there is forgiveness for him. If the Adam God doctrine isn't true, how come Doctrine and Covenants 2711 calls Adam the Ancient of Days, which is clearly a title for God in Daniel chapter 7? Why does the Book of Mormon contain extensive word-for-word -word quotes from the Bible if the LDS Church is correct in teaching that the Bible has been corrupted? Why do the Bible verses quoted in the Book of Mormon contain the italicized words from the King James Version that were added into the KJV text by the translators in the 16th and 17th centuries? If the Book of Mormon was engraved on gold plates thousands of years ago, why does it read in perfect 1611 King James Version English? If marriage is essential to reach exaltation, why did Paul say that it is good for a man not to marry in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1? Since the word of wisdom teaches us to abstain from alcohol, why did Paul encourage Timothy to drink wine for his stomach in 1 Timothy 5.23? If Jesus is Jehovah in the Old Testament and Elohim is referred to as God in the Old Testament, can you please explain Deuteronomy 6.4, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, Jehovah, our God, Elohim, is one Lord, Jehovah, if you translate it in the original language. Why does the Mormon church teach that we can be married in heaven when Jesus said in Matthew twenty two thirty that in the resurrection, men neither marry nor are they given in marriage? Do Joseph Smith's teachings trump the words of Jesus himself? How can worthy Mormon males become gods in the afterlife when God already said that before him no God was formed, nor will there be any gods after him? Isaiah 43.10 If God had a father who was a god, how come Isaiah 44.8 says that he does not know him? If God was just a man, who progressed to becoming a god, how do you explain Psalm 90 verse 2, where it says, Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. How can God be an exalted man when Numbers twenty three nineteen says that God is not a man? 
Why does the Mormon church teach that Elohim had sexual relations with Mary to conceive Jesus when both Matthew and Luke teach that she was a virgin? The Seer, January 1853, page 158. Why does the LDS church teach that Jesus paid for our sins in the Garden of Gethsemane when 1 Peter 2.24 says that it was on the cross? Why did Bruce R. McConkie write that man can commit a sin so grievous that it will place him beyond the atoning blood of Christ in Mormon Doctrine, 1979, page 93, when the Bible clearly says that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin in 1 John 1, verse 7? Why does the LDS Church teach that men first existed as spirits in heaven when 1 Corinthians 15, 46 says that the physical body comes before the spiritual. Why do Mormons say that the sticks in Ezekiel 37 represent the Bible and the Book of Mormon when Ezekiel 37, 20 through 22 tells us that the sticks represent two nations, not two books? Why does the LDS Church teach that Jesus and Lucifer were spirit brothers when both the first chapter of John and Colossians teach that Jesus is the creator of all things, including Lucifer? Why do worthy Mormons hold the Aaronic priesthood since Hebrews 7, 11 through 12 clearly teaches that it was changed and superseded by something better. If your leaders are correct about the complete falling away of the true church on earth, was Jesus in error when he said that the gates of hell will not prevail against it in Matthew 16, 18? If having a physical body is necessary to become a God, how did Jesus become a God before he had a body? Do you think that the LDS Church will reconsider its teachings that the American Indians are descendants of the Jewish race now that DNA evidence has proven that they are actually descendants of the Asian race? If polygamy was officially reinstituted by the Mormon Church, how would your wife feel about you taking another woman? Since the LDS Church teaches that there was a complete apostasy of the true church on earth, does that mean that the three living Nephites and the apostle John went into apostasy also? Why are Mormon temple ceremonies secret to the public when the Old Testament temple ceremonies were open to public knowledge? These are all questions to consider and they're all questions that need answers. If you are LDS and you are unable to answer these questions and you have issues with them, I encourage you to study them out. There is so much more where this came from, but I thought that this video was very important because I wanted to touch on these subjects. There are a lot of issues where there are contradictions and there are questions that need answers and yet there aren't any solid answers to be found because Mormonism is a false religion. And I have this channel to talk about the fact that the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, are false and they are unbiblical and they not only contradict the Bible, but they contradict one another. So if you are a Mormon and you are searching, I encourage you to continue on your search, seek out answers for your own church's teachings and history, my channel is a great place to start. I cover so many LDS topics right here on my channel. I already have over 30 videos out all on LDS topics, and I cover a huge, vast array of Mormon topics. And I do this with sources for every single point that I make. I do this so that you can find out the truth, so that you can do some searching on your own, and you can establish why it is that you believe what you believe. And when you come to the conclusion that Mormonism is false, I encourage you to seek out biblical Christianity because there are solid answers to be found when it comes to 
um, the belief system of born-again Christians. Um, biblical Christianity is solid and it is truth, and the God of the Bible is not the God of Mormonism. The gospel message of the Bible is not the gospel message of Mormonism, and the biblical plan of salvation is not the LDS plan of salvation. They are all completely different things, and they have a very different end result. And so I just encourage you to go on a quest for truth and find out what it is that you believe and why you believe it. And if you have questions for me, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you further. Uh, you can reach me via email. I'll post my email below, or you can find me over on my Facebook page, Happiness is Free, and I would love to talk to you further on there. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would love to see you back. So please hit that subscribe button below, and I hope to see you in future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to seek truth and God bless.